Um, my name's Daniela and I am president of the British Veterinary Association and I am absolutely delighted to be here with you today talking about how to become a vet and what it involves and the fact that you don't need to be from a certain background in order to make it in veterinary medicine. So we'll move on to my slides. Next slide please. So a little bit of introduction first of all. Um, as I said, my name's Daniela and I am a small animal and exotic pet vet. I graduated from the Royal Veterinary College in 2012 um, and I am the current president of the British Veterinary Association as well. And I am going to tell you a little bit more about myself, my background, show you all the different things that vets do and show you that you don't need to be from a certain background or look a certain way. All you need is a passion for people science and animals to make it at, with a veterinary career. Next slide, please. So I've known I've wanted to be a vet ever since I was a very young child. I had a passion for science and a love of animals, and I knew from early in primary school that that's what I wanted to do. Now, I grew up in Lambeth, an inner borough of London, where 36% of children live in poverty and 45% of disadvantaged children do not achieve target GCSE grades. I grew up in a single parent family and my mum is an immigrant who works as a cleaner. I went to an all girls comprehensive school in central London and I became the first person in my family to go to university. I was always told it was too hard and that growing up in a city meant I wouldn't be able to work with farm animals. Well that's totally wrong. You can be a vet whatever your background is as long as you have a passion and determination. It took me five attempts to get into vet school but I did. Next slide, please. So why do people become vets? So we asked some vets, and as you can see, there's some of their answers on screen. For some, they have always known, and vet medicine combines a love of animals and a passion for science. For others, it's the variety of the work we do. But it's not all about animals. It's really important that you like people too, as whether it's a pet, a farm animal, or even a zoo animal there will always be an owner or a carer that comes with that pet. For some people, it's about the lifestyle. It's not about being in a surgery. Vets that work with horses or farm animals, for example, spend a lot of time outdoors. So there is a space for everyone in our profession. So we're gonna do a quick poll. And I want to ask you, what do vets do? Next slide, please. So there should be a Slido poll available um, for you to pick as many answers as you would like as to what you think a vet does. Next slide, please. So the answer is vets do a whole heap of different things. They look after animals, they perform surgery, they make sure your food is safe to eat. Some do conservation work or advise government. We look after the environment. Some of us become politicians. Some of us work in research. Some of us track how disease spreads, so epidemiology. Some work in charities and some have their own business. But as you can see on screen, there's just a handful of things that a veterinary degree can allow you to do. Next slide, please. When most people think of vets, they think of those working in clinical practice. Small animal practice involves working with pet animals and advising owners on preventative care, as well as dealing with medical and surgical cases. You would be working alongside qualified veterinary nurses, and there is an option to remain as a general practice vet or to go as far as specialising in a particular field of interest, for example, orthopaedics, internal medicine or oncology. Farm practice is slightly different, and whilst you do work with individual animals, doing things such as like caesarean sections, most of the work is based on herd health, aimed at prevention of disease and optimization of health. This often involves developing herd health plans, which encompass aspects such as vaccination schedules, as well as nutritional plans and fertility checks. And there are more specialized areas of farm animal practice, such as pig or poultry practice. And of course, there's also the equine sector, where you could be working with hobby horses and ponies that people use for leisure, or you could be working with high value racehorses and their reproduction, for example. Next slide. And you can work in clinical practice with more exotic species too. I work with exotic pets. 
And here you can see me with one of my favorite ever patients, an eclectus parrot called Elvis. He was absolutely amazing. And I'm just gonna give you a very short story about him. Whenever he came in to see me, and I had to do a procedure on him, whether it was simply to examine him or to take bloods, for example, I always finished by telling him, done. So every time he saw me, he said, all done. His owner told me he heard my voice on television one day, as I am often on television with my role as the British Veterinary Association, and I was on the news. And when he heard my voice, he shouted, all done. And that tells you quite how intelligent these birds are. But you can also be a vet, for example, working with fish or zoo animals. And if you do have an interest in zoo animals, do look back on the recordings, as we did have our, a zoo vet called Justine presenting earlier today. And we do, shortly after me, have um, some equine and farm animal vets talking to you as well. Next slide, please. But there are also many things that you can do outside clinical practice. On the left, we have Neil an army vet who went to Africa to help with the Ebola outbreak. In the top middle, we have Gladys, a Ugandan vet working in gorilla conservation, who is doing brilliant work, not only to save the gorillas, but also help the local people. And bottom right, we have Richard, who is not only a marine mammal vet and a university lecturer, but also a NASA astronaut. We have vets that work in the pharmaceutical industry, helping develop, test, and supervise the production of drugs and chemicals, as well as giving advice on products to vets in practice. We have vets that work in research laboratories too, and there is at least one vet involved in the development of the vaccine for COVID-19 at the moment. A veterinary degree opens up loads of opportunities beyond what is seen as the traditional role, and there will always be a sector that sparks your own individual interest. So what does a normal vet look like? Next slide, please. Every single person you see on this screen is a vet. We're all different, with different backgrounds and different passions. So there is no such thing as being a normal vet. So if you're listening, thinking, is this profession for me? Absolutely. A vet is whoever you are and whatever you want to be. All you need to do is have a passion for animals and science and be determined to get there. Next slide, please. So how do you become a vet? And I'm sure some of you are listening um, wanting to know exactly that. Well, at the moment, there are nine universities offering a veterinary medicine degree. And the course lasts somewhere between four and six years. And it depends on your route of entry. Next slide, please. Now, the entry requirements vary slightly between different the different universities. So do check with each one. But in general, you will need a minimum A at chemistry and plus or minus biology. But most, circumstances, most universities will look at your personal circumstances when it comes to which offers they make you. Some do not have interviews, others do, and have practical interviews with mini, mini clinical and problem solving stations, for example. But if you're looking at this and you're thinking, there is no way I can get those grades, please don't panic. It's not the only way in. Next slide, please. So please don't worry if your circumstances mean either getting the grades or work experience will be a challenge. For example, if you live in the middle of a city, you might find it difficult to access farm animal experience. Or if you are working in a school that perhaps is not as supportive as you would like, you may have find it difficult to get your grades. But there are some brilliant widening participation schemes out there. And I put just two on the screen at the moment. The Royal Veterinary College where I went, for example, has a gateway program, which effectively has a year zero um, year. You need three C's and you don't need any work experience. They're looking for your passion and your determination to succeed. Next slide, please. So, oh, one more back, please. There we go. So if you would like some more information, uh, on the left, you have the My Vet Future website. Now, the My Vet Future website is there for whether you are primary school, secondary school, or even if you have already started a degree, whether you're a vet in your early career or a vet late in your career, that is the one-stop shop for all career advice you could need for becoming a vet or even a vet nurse. And Vet Schools Council, as you can see on the right, is there that has information about the individual schools and what they require from you. Next slide, please. So, 
Thank you very much for listening. Um, that's my dog, Bridget Bones, on the left, saying thank you for taking the time. Um, my social media handles are there if you'd like to get in touch. Um, and if there are any questions, then I can take them now.